Hi guys and welcome back to another video on this channel. Today I'm gonna be showing you a very good multi-platform SDR software. I'm talking about SDR++. First things first, we will be needing to install the SDR++ application. So, I'm just going to open the web browser over here. And we should be over here. So, after you get to this website, click the nightly build and download button. It has more features than the latest release and is updated frequently, so we'll download that. So, after the GitHub page loads, you will need to select the platform. As you can see, SDR++ supports a lot of different platforms and I'm running Windows, so I'm going to select STR++-Windows-X64.zip Just click on that and it should automatically download. So let's open that up and extract it to the desktop. After the file is extracted, Open it and select sdr++.exe. What we are gonna do now is create a shortcut so you don't need to go into this folder all the time. So right click and menu like this should appear and click the create shortcut button. Now I'm gonna name it str++ and drag it to my desktop. And you can put this folder somewhere safe like into the documents folder. So after we created the icon, just double tap on it. And if something like this pops up, don't worry, this is just Windows being Windows and it's okay. So click more info and run anyway. And the SDR application should load like this. After the SDR application is loaded, you will need to configure it. But don't worry, the configuration is very simple and easy to do. So first, pick your source, or under, in other words, pick your SDR. I'm using an RTL SDR block v3 dongle, so I'll click that and it automatically selected. You can uh, play around with the SDR settings. So you can see there is a lot of settings over here. And one setting I am going to change is a 50 frame rate. If you have a more powerful computer, I recommend to change this because it would make everything smoother. And finally, click the play button. There we go. So what we can see here is the spectrum over here on the top. Next we have a band plan, frequencies, and finally waterfall. So how do you use the thing? I want to receive HF and to receive high frequencies on an RTL STR dongle you will need to enable direct sampling or Q branch. So we can do that over here in the source section. Selecting the Q branch. And here we are at the medium wave and long wave section. You can zoom in and out using the zoom slider on the side and you can change the modulation over here so upper side band lower side band narrow band fm wide fm double side band cv or raw i'll leave it on am so you can scroll around by left clicking and holding and just simply 
dragging the, your mouse to left and right left and right on the frequency panel as I like to call it one important thing is that you can use your mouse slider to move around the frequencies and fine-tune let's go to the 20 meter amateur band and zoom in and try to receive some Morse code But you can also receive upper sideband and lower sideband. So let's try receiving some FT8 on uh, 074 over here by clicking the upper sideband button. And of course, we can also receive some phonic amateur activity. This transmission is actually pretty cool because this radiometer is using the 5 kilohertz USB bandwidth or no 5 kilohertz but 4 kilohertz and it actually pretty correctly demonstrates that you can drag this line around and manually set the bandwidth of the signal This also works for lowering the bandwidth if you are using the 40 or 80 meter bands. But of course, we can also use other bands, such as 18 meters, but I don't think there is going to be any activity, oh no, 18, 17 meters, I meant, and you can see there is no activity. We can try the 15 meter band. I also don't see any visible activity and I suspect there's not going to be much on CB also the 10 media ham band we could try to receive some commercial radio as you can see It's pretty mixed up, but that's okay for the demonstration. There is also a nifty feature called Frequency Manager, and in here you can create lists. So let's create a list. Interesting AM stations. Let's call it like that and you can tune a radio station let's say this one but I can click add and let's say AM1 and apply and you can see it automatically created a bookmark and I can click on that and we can listen to that station we can also select let's say this station over here AM2 
and you can see I can tune between them and I can also create more than one list so let's create another list let's name this let's name this diggy mode and let's jump to the uh, SSTV frequency of uh, 14 230 kHz selecting upper sideband so over here SSTV and let's go to 0 7 so let's select Tiki modes and add a new station FT8 on 20 meters and as you can see I can see all the shortcuts I've created one nifty feature of this software is also adjusting the waterfall levels because it's all red and I do like it so let's, uh, let's set the minimum little down and you can see it's much more prettier let's select AM over here clicking apply and you can see all the bookmarks and you can jump between them pretty interesting one other feature is also uh, recorder you can record baseband which records the raw signal and you can play it back in the software by selecting uh, file and you can select a raw file from over here but uh, we are not going to be doing that we are going to be going to our list and let's select the AM3 station Uh, let's record so clicking audio you can select the format and just clicking record now we are currently recording the station to be played back later so stop the recording and we can see uh, where the uh, STR++ saved the recording it should be in its own folder going to recordings and here we have it it is peaking a little bit but that can be adjusted with the levels over here like this Let's make a new recording of the station and now it should not clip. Stopping the recording, going to our my recordings folder and you can see it sounds much better. Pretty nice. Another good feature about SDR++ and SDRs in general is that they make easy to decode digital modes such as FT8. And we can see some activity. This is the end of the video and I thank you for watching and I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.